doctrines that ultimately shape uh, history. Paul Samuelson was right when he said that he would be happy to let anyone else be the finance minister of any country if he could write the economics textbooks that the students read. And Isaiah Berlin was right when he said that nations fell because of ideas developed by professors in the quiet of their study. And so what happens in universities is profoundly important, not in an hour or a day or a week or a month, but ultimately for the development of societies and for the development of the world. Henry Kissinger was wise in many things, but he was wrong when he said that the fights were so vicious because the stakes were so small. Or at least he was partially wrong because some of the fights are very vicious over things where the stakes are very small. But sometimes the stakes are very large. And it is an aspect of what is going on in universities, their response to the challenges in the Middle East, their response to debates over the state of Israel that are of great concern to me, have been for some time, and caused me to be here tonight. My wife, uh, last March, came back from spending 10 days as a visiting scholar at Hebrew University. She described many aspects of that experience, but there was one aspect that she described that made the greatest impact on her and had the greatest impact on me. She talked about how she prepared to give a lecture to a group of Israeli scholars, graduates and undergraduates, on various topics in American literature. Franklin, Hawthorne, Melville, Faulkner, Dickinson, and so forth. But she described to me how, while she had been introduced many, many times, as I had, for the first time, the person who introduced her had a tremble in her voice, reflecting great emotion as she introduced Lisa. That was not, I have to confess, a reflection of Lisa's personal greatness. It was a reflection of what Lisa's presence met. For all the scholars and students in that room had been recently informed that the American Studies Association, the group that oversaw and supported professional scholars studying America, a group that whose work had engaged Israeli scholars and Arab scholars and Israeli and Arab scholars working together on a common interest of understanding America, that that group had been informed that the American Studies Association, an organization of thousands of American scholars that included among its members dozens, if not hundreds, of American universities had voted 
to ban scholarly exchange with scholars in Israeli universities. The American Studies Association was the largest such association, but it was not the only such association. The African Literature Association, the Association for Asian American Studies, the Association for Humanist Sociology, the Critical Ethnic Studies Association,